How's it going, people? It is Liam Catterson here, and we're reacting to another episode of Angel as we get into episode number six of season four, coming off a really, really amazing episode um, with so much focus being on Fred, which is what I love to see because Fred's adorable. Um, though it was quite the emotional uh, journey for her in the last episode after finding out that her old professor sent her to Pylea, and uh, understandably so, she wanted to extract revenge upon the professor, but Gunn beating her to the punch, wanting to preserve that innocence and deciding to kill the professor himself. And uh, yeah, that resulted in frosty tensions between between uh, Fred and Good, so that's gonna be great rolling into this episode, but hey ho, just another day of healthy relationships in the Buffyverse, am I right? Uh, uh, but at least that's canon, unlike Cordelia and Connor. We don't talk about that, that's non-canon, and I refuse to make mention of it ever again because, um, but we did have Cordelia confront Angel at the ending of the last episode, uh, asking if them two had a thing, um, and I believe Angel will, of course, be, um, honest about the fact that them two, there was sparks between them two, but I'm not holding out hope that these two are going to get back on track as if, you know, we're going to see things blossom as it should have done in the season three finale, uh, especially with the fact that Cordy is still in a pretty vulnerable state, um, with her memory loss. So, um, if she gets her memories back, um, then I could see things pushed a, a, a bit forward, but Angel will still take things a bit cautiously, but I'm not getting my hopes up with that last, um, scene, um, uh, coming into this episode so yeah but uh with that said let's get into episode number six of season four of angel looking forward to checking this episode out so with that said let's go Bye. always a delight Misty with lawn singing <laughs> and the stripping and, and the roundness, but that was a spell. And and we were meeting in Malibu on the bluffs at night. That's a pretty romantic restraining order. Don't yell at me. Shh. You're yelling at me. I'm oh, not. this is See, all this is why complex. I don't want to answer questions I don't have the answers for. I... Provided by one of my clients that is guaranteed to bring our Cordy back to the way she was. Oh, oh. No pain, no side effects. I'm telling you, swingers, there's no way this can fail. Well, you say I'm that. Idiot. What are you, perfect? <laughs> as long as it's not from my mother. <laughs> Is this on? <laughs> secondly, I didn't know that a couple of hours ago, Fred had tried to kill her evil professor by opening a portal. Gunn didn't know that Wesley had helped her. And Wesley didn't know Gunn had killed the guy himself to save Fred from becoming a killer. And Fred didn't know... I'm just Gunn loving this, right this direction. That Wesley had this narration that Lorne's doing. I can see. I see you have such faith in your relationship. Keep pushing, English. Do you think you <laughs> could get out of my way? No, what? <gasps> oh my god! Not all of us have muscle to fall back on. Wesley's taking no shit. Like, he has no... What happened to you, man? ...worries whatsoever inside. I had my throat cut and all my friends abandoned me. What's gonna happen? Um... I feel a little... Oh no, this is trippy as We can't just... We have to... No! Oh, Was that supposed to... No, I don't think it was. Hiring call for Snippety Princess Charles. It's Wesley. Thank you. Wyndham Price. That's... I am from the Watchers Academy in Southern Hampshire. In fact, I happen to be head boy. Oh no, Wesley's from. Is it? Oh no, he's back. The Wesley of old is back. <laughs> Me, that's my name. The short version. Yes, where do you hail from, friend? I'm not your friend, you English pig. We never wanted you in Ireland. We don't want you now. You oh Irish? no. You don't sound Irish. For most certain, I sound exactly. Something wrong with my voice. Well, what's your name? Liam. Ah! Great, we've all to be headless, boy. You don't get out my face. Intimidation. Oh. Points for effort. 
Perhaps a little karate technique will put you in your place. <laughs> I forgot. Like it, it it's so. <laughs> Oh my god, I've I've missed how unorthodox Wesley was. Wooden stick. I didn't get one. Oh. Nobody got one. So English here. Why is that? I don't know. Watch his council. Some kind. Yeah, that part works. Which suck. It's the devil. Why is the devil sleepy? Oh! It would have been funny if he was like, Doom! No. Meanwhile, Chad Connor! Not till we find out. Oh! Quit it! Oh! Watch the arms! Watch the arms! Are you gonna get in there and stop them? This is so, this is so bizarre and really, really fun. Oh! I know I'm still unconscious during this part of the story, but can you believe these mooks? <laughs> <laughs> the story! If head cheese here has a theory, then let's hear it! The weapons, the maze-like locale, the innocent civilians, and a mysterious Karatma Mahanyag demon. <laughs> this is a test. I ain't a civilian. I've been killing maps since I was 12. Good theory but there, Wes, theory. but... You must be here in an advisory capacity. I think I'm here to chop that green bitch's head off capacity, and I don't give a damn about no tests. Are you win this day? I assure you. I'm ready. I'm okay. It'd be cooler if we could score some weed, though. I didn't know Fred had this wild streak in her. God, there's like a million. I'm just waiting for Wesley and Cordy to just lock eyes. How did? You stopped the tiny men from singing. <laughs> you really are far from home, aren't you? <laughs> Tell you, I get through this. <laughs> on, up, on, on, off. I'm a vampire. They're gonna kill me. Oh, that worry, that like worry in his voice. Lying on a table, no clothes, no will, while they probed and explored and did whatever they wanted to my naked, helpless body. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, but I assure you, this is demonic work, and they're not nearly so exploratory. Oh. Don't be afraid of him, at least he ain't as bored as me. Joke all you like. Liam right now may be facing horrors he's never even imagined. Oh yeah, I am! Oh yeah, I am! <laughs> oh, this is gonna be overwhelming for him, because... ...of him being from a different time. Liam! Demons! Really? Told you. <laughs> Would that I were, Miss Cheese. The simple fact is, the fiend has been under our oh noses the entire goodness. time, waiting for the moment to strike. <laughs> the English is stupid. Let's have a different theory. I'm not quite finished. <clears throat> I think it's only fair that everyone has a turn. Uh -oh. Obviously, it doesn't affect me anymore. <laughs> My magic isn't that. Shut I mean... your mouth. <laughs> Ow. Can we just leave Lorne alone for two seconds? He's getting punched left, right, and center. It's not. He just. Well, a mystery song. Plays a lame ass couple story about being Irish, too. Is this a Oh, shit. That you left me alone with him, Jean? Miss Burkle. Run. <laughs> Of course, you'll just get knocked out within a second. It's Wesley from season three. Good, you really think that. Oh, wow, what? Oh, 
damn con- uh, Oh, for God's sake! I don't like my father. Oh, is he a self-righteous bastard? You'd be amazed. Connor, come on. You're Drop it. Me. Truth to tell, I'm not much for fighting. I'd rather be satisfying my sinful urges with the chase girl. You keep the hell away from her. Oh, the girl's yours then. That's right. She no! Oh, what a slap! You happy now? I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask to be attacked. I didn't ask to be a freak. Hell, I didn't even ask to be born. Oh. What the? I got a sea breeze that's gonna up and leave with someone else if I don't get to her soon. So you kids be good and go home. Hug your families while you can. And stay away from the magic. Trust me. Not good, not good. Oh, I'm just loving like Lord's participation in this. Were we in love? <sighs> Echoing what Cordy asked. We were. Oh, so Cordy's got her everything back. Well, that, oh my goodness, that was so, so good. That was so amazing. I mean, there were, th this was an obvious, um, I guess, reference to Tabla Raza, um, the Buffy episode from last season, where... There was this thing that happened. The thing got smashed, and uh, we left. We were left with these characters and these. Although it worked a bit differently, I, I, I guess in a sense because um, they had no idea who they were completely. The the Scoobies, whereas um, Angel Investigations um, seemed to only remember like a at a certain point where Angel. Um, this was like before his vampire days and where his father, you know, would scorn at him and whatnot. Um, so yeah. Um, but there was also Cordy season one, um, Cordy that emerged season three of Buffy Wesley. Um, it was so good. Fred, when she was, um, like a, a, about, Several years younger, and I, I guess season one or pre season one good as well. Like, um, it, it's so interesting having like certain characters, uh, and knowing what they were before, um, who they are right now, and just exploring them, but also having different dynamics rather than Wesley be at Sunnydale, for example, and Cordy and uh, interacting with these different people. It's like, okay, let's take these people out of time in a sense and uh, plot them here and see how they get on in a sense. So, um, but it was so, so good. I just loved it. It was, it was, it was comedical. It had its, um, Moments of emotion, especially at the end, and there was, of course, that um, parallel to the last episode where Cordy asked, "Were we, like, did we have a thing?" Uh, now Angels asked, and uh, yeah, but just the style of it was great, it's especially the fourth wall shattering, uh, especially with Lord, like he was the narration, and and um, he kept he he kept taking himself out of the story to to help you know set the scenes up especially when he was tied up and uh, fred was analyzing him and there was like that pause or anything and he was like so kiddos this is what's happening um this was fantastic that was really fantastic i just loved how um fun that episode was really it was um, an episode that didn't go without repercussions, of course. Uh, I think in a similar vein of how Tabla Raza um, 
you know, it was for the most part an enjoyable episode, but it doesn't um it, it, it doesn't diminish the fact that there are gonna be consequences from this. I mean even Lon hinted it, so yeah. Um but not just that though, but in terms of the relationships with people, kinda like how um Tablu Araza uh, really heightened um certain fractures as well with Giles uh and, and Buffy with Giles on his way out and um you know there was this i guess calmness and then things just started to hurt after the spell diminished um and importantly willow and tara as well um considering the conversation before um the spell was placed on everyone in tabla raza um yeah uh, things got even more uh, tense between the pair so and um we're seeing similar ramifications here with uh, especially angel and cordy cordy seems to have her memories back um but at what cost is going to be the question and you know obviously when she saw those uh that that beastly face um it, like she was traumatized i'm not sure if that's something to do with the fact that um with the fact that she came back and had no memory, is it a consequence of her? Okay, she remembers, so that's a that's a no no. Or is it something that she had experienced between the finale of season three uh, up until her return? It's unclear at the minute, but uh, it's obviously something that um, she is shaken over and um, needs. Even if she's got her memories back, she needs space over to reflect this. So. Yeah, uh, I'm really curious to see what's going to happen there, but yeah. What I also really loved as well is the fact that I think this could be defined as a bottle episode, and there was a bottle. Hey. <laughs> uh, which is a very, very on-the-nose situation, but it was a really, really great idea as well. So, um, yeah, but it was just so great to see these characters regress to who they like were, I guess, in, in some point in their lives. Um, obviously in different stages, um, with Cordy and Wesley, I guess, um, adopt, well, and Gunn, I'd say, uh, adopting their earliest, um, personifications of when we saw them, uh, Cordy was, um, very narcissistic she was um very dramatic and uh, uh there was that self-centeredness from her but and i think i can say this i think this is uh, uh i think cordy's story has been the most invigorating um to, to like digest i guess in terms of uh where she was when we started with buffy the vampire slayer and who she is right now i feel like uh, those small developments uh, to the point of where what who she is should i say right now has been really really enjoyable because you can see a really really big difference in cordy's character she is a lot more empathetic uh, these days and um she's just grown so much and i feel like all the characters have grown so much in their own ways but i feel like with the fact that we've gotten to know cordy a lot longer and there's been of course more layers to her story i guess um i think um seeing her growth hits a lot more sweeter if that makes sense so yeah whereas uh, i feel like angel slash liam um obviously that's um uh hit, like uh the growth of his character in terms of uh, the timeline that's going to be a lot more um stretched out because he's from what the 16th 17th century um so yeah, we saw him basically adopt pre-vampire days, um, uh, Angel, uh, when he was called Liam, and um, yeah, it was just very, very interesting because we've gotten small doses of life before he was a vampire. Um, so it's not like this is a completely new side, but it's not as um layered as as Cordelia, if that makes sense. So yeah, um. But it was just really interesting. Like, you saw that frightened state that, like, um, hurt about the fact that um, he feels a lot of um, pain with his life. Um, he even heard when he was re um, talking to Connor and saying, I didn't ask for this, I didn't ask to be born. Um, and the fact that he just feels empty and, yeah... 
Um, what I really thought that was interesting, though, is how he reacted to his vampire self, as opposed to Spike um, in Tableau or Raza. Uh, it was just really, really interesting. Um, but also the differences in terms of um, how they acted. Like Spike was, I'd say Spike was a bit more benevolent. And I'm not sure that's because of uh, the whole soul thing, because Angel... Um, you know, he has a soul in this um, situation. Spike in that episode didn't. So I'm not sure if uh, it it's, I don't know, some kind of reverse state or whatever. But I do find it very interesting how they acted a, a bit more differently. Like there was that temptation from Angel and um, um, there was a bit more, I guess... I don't know. I I would say there was there was a bit more hostility in in his words and whatnot, but he's he wasn't downright and jealous if anything. But there were little like little sprinkles there, if that makes sense. So yeah. Whereas um, Spike was um, yeah he was completely uh, clueless and he was hoping. Well, there was even a little joke actually uh, in in that episode where he mocked Angel um, unknowingly, of course. But uh, he said, "I could be a, a like a, I don't know a, a rogue vampire who you know helps the people and whatnot." Um, and then and I think Buffy retorted, "Yeah, that's lame." So uh, I I I think that was uh, it went something along those lines. But yeah, they were obviously referencing to Angel and uh, what he does, of course uh under the norm so yeah um but uh like i said i feel like there were clear differences to spike and angel about how they handled their vampire uh personification so yeah and uh obviously that's going to be different so you got to change like obviously this episode was like referencing tabula rasa in my opinion and you got to change some things up so um and i feel like um the big difference was the fact that nobody knew who they were in Tabla or Raza. Whereas in this episode, there was a certain point of these char- for these characters to regress towards, um, whether it be uh, the earliest point uh, of um, where we saw them, I guess, in terms of um, uh, Cordelia and Wesley, or if it... Because there was Fred as well, who was... Um, who, who seemingly, you know... Um, hinted about the fact that she was into the into uh drugs when she was in school so yeah uh, when she was uh cordy's age so yeah and obviously we haven't seen um fred at that age but uh um it's it's so interesting how we had a point of where these characters would regress towards in terms of their age so but it played out for a really really fun scenario but um i also really liked how Obviously, I mentioned about the fact that um, this episode um, didn't ignore any kind of ramifications post the whole um, bottle spell and how relationships may have been a bit more um, amplified in terms of its tension following it. Obviously, we had things with Angel and Cordy um, and um, basically how Angel is like how he saw himself, you know, despised by the world like people were ganging up on him and and there was that feeling of resentment uh from him um there was even wesley and good tension like under the spell and obviously there was beforehand like with wesley um planting seeds of doubt into gun's head um uh, saying i'm glad you have so much faith in your relationship very very vindictively obviously he there are like these little seeds that he still has the hots for fred um, and things are not looking too rosy with Fred and Gunn at the minute. So uh, Wesley is, um, you know, um, making things a bit more doubtful uh, in terms of that dynamic. Um, but we saw them, you know, just spar off against each other under the spell. And it was so funny. Like, um, it, it, it's just so interesting, though, because um, um, we really haven't seen this kind of Wesley and and. Um, uh, this could interact uh obviously there's a bit more of a there was a bit more of a layered state with uh, wesley by the time gun was brought in in uh, i think it was episode 20 of season one um but uh we know that gun you know he wanted to kill lawn straight away so uh, obviously he was a bit more um he, he was a bit well less open um uh, those days whereas now he has shown a bit more um respect towards uh, those who do like inherit demon 
uh, DNA and whatnot. Um, but it's just so interesting because when Wesley was full, uh, first brought into uh, Angel, there was still a bit of that hopelessness, but he has grown and there has been a big change in his dynamic, especially um, between uh, over the course of season three, should I say, where he's gotten a bit more darker and a bit more colder. But uh, we haven't seen, like, the earliest point of when we saw Wesley interact with Gunn, I feel, uh, at his earliest point. So it was just so funny because they are they are literally, like, um, night and day. There was, there was that, um, you know, coldness to, to Gunn. Like I said, he's a bit more open these days, uh, but he uh, really gave no shit back then and uh, he embodied that death wish. So there was a, a bit of a cold, darkened state within uh, Gunn then, but he has grown since then. Um, and Wesley, he was just, he was just hopeless and um, very, very comedical, very clumsy. Uh, but he has, I guess you could say, grown in a sense. Um, like, it does feel a bit wrong to say that he has grown, um, whereas he has embodied a more darker and a bit more of a malice um, um, vibe to him. But I think I think I only say that he's grown because of the fact that he's um, embodied layers to his uh, character. So um, he is now no longer the clumsy, hopeless, uh, but lovable character uh, that we first saw him uh, with Buffy. Um, he is someone who um, is a bit more, I, I guess, um, hardened and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, seeing these characters and uh, just compare and just seeing the journey that these characters have gone through. It's it's really nice. It's really good for the nostalgia. and It's really um, nice to see just how far they've come. Um so yeah, but I I mean I did enjoy Tabla Raza a lot more in terms of um like compared to this, but this was still so good. I just loved it and it was very very interesting. And I really liked how Lorne, you know, was just keep uh, just kept breaking that fourth wall. I mean, obviously there's that like semblance of worry in terms of Lorne narrating and of course this being set at a future date and how he's um hinting about the fact that things are not all well so great but i think i what i really loved is that final moment where there is an empty club insinuating that um was lorne um imagining having an audience there and whatnot like that's what i took it as like oh they're not there um so i'm one so either he was um i i think he was imagining um the crowd being there when in reality it was just an empty bar um which this might be stretching, but there is that um, metaphor really where he was giving a lot of life in terms of his story to the to the crowd, but you know once um, that came to pass, there was there is that emptiness in the in the in the club. Um, there was a lot of life with these characters showing their uh, I guess past selves, but when the spell wore off. Um, there is that emptiness in these characters. There's a kind of a, a dejected mood, especially with Cordy. Um, so, yeah. Um, and it's I, it's not like these characters have forgotten about what happened. There is that hurt, you could say. So, yeah. Um, Connor, I want to like him, but no, no. I mean, even when he uh, kind of put two and two together regarding what's been happening with these characters and whatnot, he still soaked it in. He was still taking the piss in terms of, um, you know, taking advantage of the situation and um, uh, rubbing in the idea that, hey, I can have fun with these guys because they don't know who they are. So, yeah. Um, like, especially with Angel, where he... Um, reveled in that thing and uh he even said i nearly had you um not ex ex like angel was none the wiser on who connor was and um yeah i i do i you know i i'm just feeling like connor is going to be at a standstill in terms of his stance with angel i feel like there's going to be no development if anything to um his dynamic with angel because of the fact that um like, if anything, I feel like this should be a bit of a wake-up call in terms of, 
I don't know how he sees Angel, uh, if anything, because I don't want I because ideally I don't want his resentment to Angel to to you know um, go on too long to be stretched out, um, and it's understandable with what Holtz taught him uh, that he would embody that, but there's got to be a point where you got to start uh, developing and um, understanding Angel. I feel, and at this point, I just feel like Connor's just going to be at a standstill so um yeah especially with the fact that he's on his own really so he's got no no one to like and 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 that's his choice at the end of the day so he's on his own and you know he's only got himself to rely on so he's going to embody that um attitude that he carries so yeah um but on, overall i really thought this was a fun episode it was really great um like it was really amazing to have the cast play around with their characters a bit um rather than okay this is basically the norm in terms of my personality and whatnot but they were playing around with their characters re like revisiting their old lives i guess when they were first introduced into the buffy verse um and it was just really really fun and bizarre and i really loved it so fantastic episode overall but yeah i will see you guys next time hope you guys enjoyed this reaction you can check out my videos on the right if you want to check out more of my content you can also subscribe to my media feeds and channel if you want to hope you guys enjoyed this reaction hope you guys take care and i will see you guys next time Toodles!